What's up people? Today we are gonna go on a little bit of adventure because last week I went down to Gothenburg um, to do some climbing and from it came four short stories. Uh, one from when I tried deep water soloing for the first time. Uh, one from the most insane headwind that I've ever faced. Third one was from when I tried the hardest boulder problem that's been established in all of Sweden. Uh, and then finally, we just had a pretty chill session um, on some boulders where I'm going to let you guys get, guess the grades. But that's going to be in the next episode. So today we're just going to look at three different stories. We're going to start off with the deep water silver one. So this adventure starts off at Ågelsjön, which is an area that we uh, stopped at on our way down to Gothenburg. Pretty much halfway from Stockholm to Gothenburg. And since the route is above water, the only options are to either swim or take a boat there. And since we didn't have a boat, we had to swim. This left us with no shoes and no chalk. But luckily the hold has some really, really good holds on it. So, um, yeah, we could climb on it. <laughs> There. Now the route gets quite scary the higher up you get, and uh, it's definitely not something for everyone. Hi Cordy. Last part of this thing coming right up. I have found no hands. <sighs> However, the reason that I wanted to keep this in the vlog, even though the footage is kind of strange because <laughs> it's a GoPro on my head, it's the fact that it's one of the most thrilling experiences I've had in climbing and it's something that I would actually recommend pretty much any climber who's somewhat advanced to try out. Um, it was just, it was just absolutely amazing. <laughs> After the deep water solo, we went all the way down to Gothenburg and uh, stopped at an island called Hörna. And this is where the headwind comes in. Because, as I mentioned, it was the most insane headwind that I'd ever seen. And we we were carrying five pads in total, one ladder and climbing equipment. And the approach there took us pretty much two hours on an approach that would usually take between maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And afterwards, I was completely exhausted. It was probably the worst approach I've ever made. And there it cuts. There's a, the most insane headwind I've seen in a long, long time. And the approach here has been absolutely horrendous. But we've made it to a crag where I probably won't top anything out because I was checking out the top earlier and it's so windy up there that I pretty much get knocked off when I'm just standing at the top of the boulder. Um, we'll see. I'll try some moves and see how it feels. All right, that's upon it.
That was like the most cold pump I've been in a long time. <laughs> the top is like, I guess it's not all jugs, but it's pretty much all jugs. <laughs> but it's just like, I have no trust in my fingers that I'll stick on to the, to the rock just because it's, I feel like I'm being blown off. And just like sitting on top of the rock was hard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, oh, that was cool. After I'd done the Gamlo Hobbit, it was time to try a boulder that was even more gorgeous than that one, the train spotting boulder. One of the most notorious and the hardest boulder in all of Sweden. And uh, yeah, needless to say, I was quite excited. So we're at a project that I've never actually wanted to try to be honest because it's pure crimps, like slopey crimps on a somewhat steep angle but we just went here to look at it because it's the hardest hardest bowler problem that exists in Sweden right now. Uh, so the hardest bowler problem that anyone's done and it was uh, FA'd by, first ascended by Malix Megos like three years back, four years back or so. Um, and I don't know, I, I got to the bowler, we checked it out and my fingers just started itching because I just want to check it out, check out some of the moves and uh, well, show them to you guys as well. So yeah, let's hop on it and uh, see how it goes. decent start. I'm sure that's where it gets hard <laughs> but it was a fun first burn. Definitely like uh, nail biter crimps. It's very cool. I'm actually just gonna give this like I'm gonna limit it to five attempts. <laughs> Cordelius frowning behind the camera but no I will because fingers they feel pretty strong but um, they are aching a little bit from just one go so I don't want to push it too much and I think if I give myself the time to work on this boulder I'll just injure myself because uh, I really just wanted to feel out the first couple of moves and understand what the boulder is about and that felt really good on the first burn so like I'm honestly satisfied already but I'll try it a little bit more That's where the name comes from, the train spotting project. Um, Cause you're literally like, I could probably toss a rock on a train that's passing by. All right, second go, here we go. Really cool, like super strange and like strenuous positions. Very, very delicate climbing. All right, I'll rest for a minute and then try it again. Yeah, this really is like one of the most aesthetic lines I might have ever seen. And it's almost ironic that it's at a crag that's just like, there's glass everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like people have used this almost as a dump. And then you got this gorgeous line yeah, if there are any like 8P plus 8C climbers out there, if you ever come to Sweden, this is definitely a boulder you should visit. World class. World class.
Okay, I'm just gonna try it one more time and then move on over because we have a ton of boulders that we wanna climb tomorrow. So one more go and then we're going to bed because it takes like an hour to prepare our car for sleeping. So, you know, better get to it. a little bit better I'll try it one more time <laughs> but I, I the thing is my fingers on like the kind of holes where you have to like the nail biter crimps where you just dig into it they start hurting after any attempt like regardless how much I train it or how much I warm up my fingers are just not made for that kind of climbing <laughs> um, so that's why they call you sloper daddy yeah that's that's why I do slopers instead slopers and pinches can't injure myself on those. But it's still fun to climb it a little bit. And I know that if I don't push it, as long as I don't overdo it, I'm usually fine. And I think I have a couple more burns in me. So I'll give it at least one more try. <laughs> this is the last one. At least one more. We'll see. Did feel okay though. Nah. Actually, I'm pushing it. Fingers are gonna break in like one or two attempts. Calling it quits. Okay, so uh, that's gonna be the end of my session on the train spot spotting project. I actually feel a little bit happy that I could climb on some of the holes. Um, as I mentioned, like this kind of in cut style is definitely not something that I'm good at and something that I want to be good at but it's just it's a slow process uh, so maybe in a few years I'll come back and try it again um, it's a shame I couldn't try some of the higher moves um, those look incredibly cool especially the final move looks like a big dino um, but I guess I'll save it for another time we're gonna move on over to our car, go to bed, and then wake up tomorrow morning and have a great session on some just sick looking boulders that we checked out earlier today. See you tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, so that's the, uh, that was how my session on the train spotting boulder went and uh, some other stories that I hope you found fun as well. Um, if you enjoyed them and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, all that jazz to make the video, you know, do better. <laughs> um, anyway, in the next one, as I mentioned previously, we're gonna uh, play another another round of Guess the Great like we did a couple of weeks back. Um, I'm not sure when I'll release that video, maybe tomorrow, maybe in two days, but quite soon. So uh, stay tuned for it and I'll see you in the next video folks, goodbye.